Oh, he's dead! Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back of His Teardown Lab. You might recall a while ago I did a review of a fingertip pulse oximeter, and uh, that was pinched, basically, from a relative who said, that looks nice, can I have it? And I was like, nah, go on then. So I've got hold of another one here. Quick look at the box. Finger pulse oximeter, portable heart rate monitor, fingertip highology, blood oxygen saturation with lanyard. Automatic shutdown, adjustable OLED display directions. One button operation for family healthcare in green. And then there's a bunch of bumps, but we're not interested in that because we don't need no stinking instructions. Although it did come with one, which is nice. That's a nice change. And it came with a lanyard. So, hmm, thumbs up. We'll just peel away the screen protector. We don't need that. And we'll pop in some batteries. So these are so useful because they're a really non-invasive way. Well, they are a non-invasive way of measuring blood oxygen, but for most of us, um, we're going to be using them for measuring our pulse. So, if we can get the back door on it, the back door, battery door. It does look like, though, it had a, an option for a port here, so perhaps some of them are rechargeable, because that would look to me like a USB micro easily. So this one differs from other models I've had before in that it has an automatic screen adjust. And no, it's actually, it's really hard to see the screen in this light. Hang on. There we go. So what you'll notice as I'm turning it, well, I've got, I've got to turn it on because my finger's not in it. Let me just shove my thumb in it. There we go. Right, so it's going to get some sort of reading. So you can see it flashing there in the bottom corner just about. That's because it's reading something. And rather tediously, there, there we go. That's a bit better. So as I turn, you can see it's actually orienting the screen in the appropriate way, which that's kind of nice, actually. Sometimes when I was wearing these, I was actually clipping them on one of my toes when I was lying in bed so I could you could read it while you're uh, watching telly, basically, because I had this fun game with it where it would set off the actual alarm on it because my pulse was getting a little bit low. So you can see it's still uh, basically calibrating, but you've got this, this is the measurement, and it's got an LED that is shining through your finger. It glows slightly red, and that's what you're seeing there. So on the left is your blood oxygen saturation, so that's saying 96%, and on the right that's your pulse rate, so that's 54. So ooh, see if I can make that go a bit lower. Calm down, dear. Calm down, dear. See? <laughs> It's all in the hips. I don't know what PI percentage is. I'll have to find out what the Magnum PI percentage is. Now, if you hold down the button, I've noticed, you've got the alarm set up, alarm on, beep on, and restore. So let's turn the beep on. And that probably is like a pulse beep. So let's try that. Oops. Long press, exit. <laughs> well, that, oh, there we go. So that's beeping on your pulse. That's kind of cute, isn't it? Sounds a bit medical when you're doing that, doesn't it? So let's turn that off. And then there's another option here I can see that says alarm setup. So let's try that one. And you can see it's the settings basically for the blood oxygen saturation high and low and then the pulse alarm high and low. Now I had a problem with previous generation of these and I'm going to test this out because, okay, let's see. So this thing seems to be a menu for selecting plus or minus. So I'm gonna to go to minus. Then I'm gonna go back down to the fifty, the fifty, And I couldn't get it to go lower. Oh, okay, let's say it goes as low as 40. Let's leave it, let's try the exit now. Because last time my pulse would occasionally get pretty low, under 50 for sure. And the old unit I had with the old firmware, it was basically not allowing it to go under. So I always had to hear this thing going off saying, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. Um, when clearly I wasn't dead, um, or at least I wasn't aware that I was dead. Um, so that was annoying. And that's they've rectified that. So I don't, I'm going to keep this and use it, but I am curious to see how it's constructed because it's going to be so simple inside. Let's just see if we can get into it a little bit. Uh, if it does look like it's going to break, yeah, fine, let's just stop. We know what it is. It's basically an LED and it's going to be a uh, receiver. It's very much like the uh, last ones. In fact, though, curiously, 
at the, dis the, the construction, there's actually just some wires. I was looking at that because one of them I had before had a little, like, if you remember, I had a flexi. This one's got actual real wires going through. So that, this is a bit more robust. In fact, I'd say that's a significant improvement on robustitude, even if that isn't a real word. It's real, it's real enough for me, boy. Um, so... so that screw basically didn't do much because it's the battery thing. I suspect though there's just the LED in there. I don't know which side is the battery and which side is the receiver. Uh, gently, gently, spanky monkey. Yeah, that's an LED in there. So the LED is shining through the little window. Four wires, four wires to activation. Activate. Ah! Almost lost me battery springs there. I'm going to see a bit gently. Because I don't want to mash it really. My preference would be to non, non mash it up. Now I'm kind of reluctant to put force on those hinges because if we put force on the hinges it could come apart. It's interesting, there's some actually, some interesting features in the case design here that make it look like they might use this for some other interesting things. Come on, there we go. Just once you pop you can't stop. Oh, 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 oh. hello, woof woof. Don't break. Woo, there we go, isn't that cute? These are the sort of things that you can make with like an Arduino, to be honest with you. It's all this, it's all like the same tech, basically. And that's why so many things have appeared, because of those cheap, cheap controller chips now. But I'm going to step you through this, because there are actually some accessible electronics on here that could be fun. But I'm just going to see if I can get the board out a bit first. Who let the dogs out? Yay! Right. Now we're cooking with gas. This is amazing. I mean, considering you get these between eight and 20 quid, I mean, this one is about a 20 quid one-ish because it has an accelerometer in it. But look what it's got. You've basically got the ST, um, STM, that's the ST's uh, Cortex, ARM Cortex chip, a receiving photodiode, and just a few little uh, additional electric things here. <laughs> Getting very complicated here. This looks like oh, a 1713N, two of those. I mean, they could just be op amps or something like that. You can see the footprint here has through hole and looks like a ribbon. Remember I said one I had before had a flexi ribbon? But look, there's also a missing component here. For There's probably something with a beefy old, beefy old thing in there that can do something interesting. Now, flipping it this way, though, there are interesting things on the board. So you can see here you've got reset. A VCG DIO clock and ground, some sort of parallel interface, and then there's a serial interface right here, RX and TX, and then there's ground reset clock data. So they're probably driving the screen with spy. But isn't that interesting that you could maybe tap in? He said putting flob on it. Oh. See that little dot now? That's going to bug me. Get off. Oh, he's made it worse. Right. Forget it. Forget that. Right. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if you could hook that up and if you actually do get a serial uh, stream out of this. Even as I'm saying it, I know I'm going to be inclined to do that. Probably not today, though, because, <laughs> frankly, i got too much to do. But that's interesting, isn't it? Really interesting. And at the end, you just got here the uh, those four connections, which is power and the LED. So the chat and the speaker, of course. We've got the little beeper, the beepy beeper. So the challenge, of course, is to get it back in in one go. So I'm going to try that real quick. Now, interestingly enough, though, hmm, you see this port that we talked about here. It does line up with those four pins, which also could be like a USB port. So I wonder if they use this is this is like a receiver module, right? If you think about it, I wonder if they use the receiver module. Sorry, just wipe the screen down a bit more with a separate uh, thing that could be off a probe, you know, like for attaching to a baby's finger or something. So maybe if you had that, you could have a separate part. Maybe that's what that is. And then you've got this nice cutaway here. Those shapes then clearly were for the hinges. We were sort of speculating on those, but that's what they're for. Click that in. 
but that's a nice hole there for running your serial wires out if you do manage to get some serial going through this. So I'm going to align this up carefully because it aligns up with the screw hole in there. Let's get this part on. Let's get it on. I am the greatest of all time. Yeah, but don't get your spring in the wrong way. That is going to be greatly annoying. Twizzers. Boo. Boom. That's ready to go. Come on. Oh, hang on. Interesting enough, there was a screw hole there, but it's never it's not actually used. It's not even used. There's a lot of tension on this uh There we go. Yeah. Oh no, look what I've done there. That's mashed up. He's mashed it. He has really mashed it. He did the mash. Oh no, that's that's terrible. <laughs> He did the monster mash. That was bad. Embarrassingly bad. How am I going to get that thing? It's a tricky one, I have to say. There we go. Boom. Let's get that screw in. And the moment of truth will be if it works at the end. So one of those chips on the board, though, I don't think the uh, ST... Um, our microcontroller Cortex has a built-in accelerometer. It kind of sounds doubtful, doesn't it? Even just saying it, so that would be my guess that that one of those chips was that accelerometer. Let's see if it works. Boom, boom, boom. So another real, real uh, reason that the serial would exist on this, of course, is also to program its firmware. So I wonder if there's any projects on the interwebs of people messing with these. Hooray! Turn off the light. Turn off my light. Turn off my light. And it's working again. So go out and buy one if you need one or you just want to fiddle with one. What else can I say really? As ever, thanks for watching.